Welcome back. It's me, Bevan. So glad that you can join me again in our machine learning journey. This video, we're going to look at how to train and test simple regression models using scikit-learn. Have you heard of scikit-learn? Oh, very powerful. You got to know about scikit-learn in Jupyter Notebook. Okay. So in the previous videos, uh, they've mainly been theoretical, conceptual, intuitive. Those are the ideas that I had in those videos, just to kind of give you an intuitive understanding of what's happening. And specifically the last two videos, previous two videos, we looked at this idea of training your models on a training set, taking the entire data set, right? And uh, t getting a test set, a, a training set out of that, and a test set. We take that test set and we hide it away and we take our models, we train them on the training data set. We train them, we fit them. But then the idea is that we want to test those models on some unseen data. Okay? So that we can measure their generalizability. How will these models fare in the, in the real world with new data? Okay. So here we're actually going to try to implement this in Python, Jupyter Notebook using scikit-learn uh, libraries. Have you heard of scikit-learn? Let's see, over here, scikit-learn. I highly encourage you, get familiar with scikit-learn, learn how it works. They've got, what is scikit-learn? Scikit-learn is essentially a machine learning library of pre-coded machine learning algorithms that all you need to do is import them. Uh, by the way, I still feel you need a deep understanding of machine learning. Uh, you don't just want to be importing these models in and then and not really knowing what you're doing. You need a deep understanding of machine learning, of data science. But the, the wonderful thing about scikit-learn, the libraries, is that you just import these already um, uh, programmed models and then you apply various kinds of, of uh, applications to this by Perhaps the, the most important is to carry out hyperparameter tuning, to tune your, the, the hyperparameters of the model. But that's for another video. But the point is, it is extremely powerful, scikit-learn. Please, you need to learn how to use scikit-learn. Okay, so in this video, after that long introduction, in this video, we are going to um, show you how to import these libraries, import a very simple data set, train your models on the data set and test them on a test set. Okay, so the first step is we import pandas as PD. Now, I don't have time to go into detail, but pandas, pandas is also something very powerful, which I hope that you would learn to use, is it is, right here, I've written it down, a library written for Python uh, for data manipulation. Okay. So it is, it is an incredibly powerful package that allows you to manipulate data sets. That's all I'm going to say. We can, we can make another video on pandas for another time, but you need to learn to use pandas. Okay. So always when you're carrying out a machine learning project, you need to import your libraries. You need to import a data set. Okay, import data set, that's the second step. Then the next step would be to pre-process your data, meaning you can clean your data, you can deal with missing data. This is a huge field, missing data. You need to encode your variables, right? So if you've got uh, a various number of uh, categorical variables, you, you need to encode them. And then you need to carry out some kind of training and testing, cross-validation, okay? Um, so we, we, we would then split our data into training testing, which is what we're going to do in this video. You train your models and you test them. Okay. So here we're using pandas as PD. Okay. This is just a shortened version. We import pandas and then there's a, a data set, which I just made up myself. Very simple data set. I'll leave, uh, it's in my, at my GitHub repository. You can go and find it there. Very, very simple data set called house price example. 
And the idea is that, you know, we want to predict house prices based on uh, two uh, input features. So we, we say house equals PD dot read CSV. So we are now um, loading our, our data set. And now let's look at it. Okay. I'm going to just reload that. I want to show you something here. For some reason, oftentimes, if you load a data set, you're going to have things that you don't like, right? This is part of the pre-processing of the data set. Before you can actually begin to train your models, you need to process the data set. So for example, here's a nice little example. Um, so my data set is made up of, of two input features, the size of the house and the number of rooms in the house. And then the output feature, which I'm interested in is price, okay, price. But now look, for some reason, there's this nonsense column. And uh, sometimes you don't know why these columns come in. Perhaps many people have more experience. But what we want is we, we want to get rid of this guy. So this is a nice little example of how to, um, of a data set. And by the way, this data set is made up of 20 rows. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about Python is that it always starts on a zero. So your first row or your first column will be your zeroth row or column. Okay, so now I want to get rid of this unnamed three nonsense column. So I can use another pandas, pandas functionality called uh, house dot drop. Okay, so we say dot drop, open brackets, and then we call that column. And then we say axis equals one. Axis equals one means we're dealing with columns. Axis equals zero means we're dealing with rows. Now it's important that we say in place equals true because if you don't say in place equals true, it will delete it the first time, but then it won't permanently delete it, okay? So if we say this, we, we drop it now, okay? And we look again at house. As you can see, that unnamed is gone. And if I run it again, unnamed is gone. But say now I take away, say now I take away that um, in place equals true. Oh, okay, you see, you see it's already gone. So let me just reload this. Okay, now you see that it's back. Okay, now I drop it. It's, um, it's been dropped, but I didn't put an in place equals true. So that means if I go again to house, it's going to be back. Do you notice that? Okay. So all that this did was I dropped it, but it was a temporary drop. So I put 